This screencast is to help you with Module 2, Lesson 3 homework, and it's based upon the problem set. Let's get started. Let's look at uh, problem 1, where we have the instructions to draw a model, then write numerical expressions. All right, let's draw some models here. After we read well, the problem, it says the sum of 8 and 7 double. We're going to represent that with a tape diagram. I'm going to draw a tape diagram. I'm going to partition it into two parts because I am doubling it. So we are going to take one of those partitions and we're going to write 8 plus 7. So this tells us that we're going to double the sum of 8 and 7. Now we'll write the expression. I'll have 8 plus 7 times 2. I'm going to have to put parentheses in because we're going to, if we look at the tape diagram, we see that we add those numbers before we multiply. Order of operation tells us that we multiply before we add. So in order to get around that, I have to put parentheses around the 8 plus 7. And uh, expressions in parentheses are, are completed before we multiply. Uh, we could change the order of this. I could also write 2 times 8 plus 7 because of the commutative property. And if we evaluated this expression, it would be 15. 15 times 2 would equal 30. And 2 times 15 also equals 30. Let's go on to B. B, we have 4 times the sum of 14 and 26. Again, we'll draw a tape diagram. We want to partition it into 4 equal parts using 3 vertical lines. I'm trying to make them roughly the same. Not perfect. And in here, we'll put 14 plus 26. So we're going to add 14 and 26, and then we're going to multiply it by 4. I could do it either way. I will go in the way it is written here. So I will start with 4 times the sum of 14 and 26. Again, the tape diagram clearly shows that we add first. So as in the previous example, we will put parentheses around the um, add ends here so that we know we can need to do those or evaluate that expression before we multiply. Again, I could change the order because of the commutative property. Let's now take a look at C. Again, we're going to have a tape diagram, but let's read it. Three times the difference between 37 and 5 tenths and 24 and 5 tenths. Take our tape diagram. This time we're going to partition it into three roughly equal parts. And what do we do? Well, we subtract 37 and 5 tenths minus 24 and 5 tenths. Whatever the answer is to that, we triple it or multiply it by 3. So I'll write 3 times, again parentheses, the difference between 37 and 5 tenths and 24 and 5 tenths. Let's go on to example D. The sum of 3 sixteenths and 2 nines. Start the tape diagram with the first part here. Uh, we know that we're going to have to add things together, but if I have three sixteenths, three sixteenths, I'm going to have to multiply, right? Because that's repeated uh, addition. So let's start with that. I'll represent sixteen. I've got three of them. And since I'm finding the sum, I'm going to take my two nines. and combine them with my 3 sixteenths. What do we have to do here? Well, if I look at this part of the tape diagram, I see that I have I hit the wrong tool again. I have 3 of these sixteenths. So what do I do? I 
have 3 times 16 and then I have 2 times 9 I find the sum of these two so I'm going to add them now do I need parentheses here? no I don't because I multiply before I add and that's what's implied by the tape diagram it wouldn't be wrong if I put parentheses in but it's not necessary again we multiply before we add let's go on to some other kinds of problems in these problems we're going to do the opposite we have the expression we have to find the words and then we have to evaluate the expression so I'm going to use the space below here because I can write a little bit more clearly when I have uh, more room to write. So what do we have here? I have 12 times the sum of 5 and 25. We notice that these, uh, these add ends are in parentheses, so that has to be done first in terms of our operations. But I can go from left to right here and I'm going to write 12 times the well what's our operation here? Our operation is adding so we're going to use the word sum the sum of 5 and 25 next I need to evaluate the expression I'm going to do it out here. So I have 12 times the sum of 5 and 25. We'll go step by step. That's 12 times. What's 5 plus 25? It's 30. And I can break that down further. I have 12 times 3 times 10. And I have 36 times 10 and I have 360 so I would uh, put 360 in here do a little erasing make a little more space I'm going to leave that expression up there and I'm going to write my new expression below it reading it I have six. The, the difference of 62 or the difference between 62 and 12 or I could say 62 minus 12 times 11. Okay, now since I'm subtracting, I'm going to use that word difference. So let's go. The difference between 62 and 12 times 11. The difference between 62 and 12 times 11. Let's evaluate it. I'll write the original expression, 62 minus 12 times 11. Evaluate the expression within the parentheses. I get 50 times 11. I can do some decomposition here. 5 times 10 times 11 equals 5 times 11 times 10 using my commutative property I get 55 times 10 and I get 550 we'll put our evaluation in the box the next thing we have are some inequalities these are interesting problems because uh, we're going to compare the two expressions in the space beneath each pair of expressions explain how you compare without calculating and draw a model if it helps you. I'm uh, going to verbally go through this and explain how we can do this without calculating. I'm sure some of you are going to be very tempted to calculate. I suppose you could, but I'd like you to reason your way, or at least try to reason your way through. Let's look at A. 24 times 20 plus 5. Here I have 20 plus 5 times 12. Well, 
they have something in common. They both have the sum of 20 and 5. We see that we have different numbers that they're multiplied by. Let's uh, use the commutative property and take a look at these. Uh, I'm going to take uh, the uh, example on the left. I'm going to transpose it to the right, but I'm going to switch the order of the factors using the commutative property. So I'm going to write 20 plus 5 times 12 or times 24, excuse me. Well, it's very clear here without going through all the computation that if I take the same number, and then we know that 20 plus 5 is 25, I'm going to have a bigger product when I multiply 25 by a bigger factor. And we can use these words to explain it. We could... Uh, talk about the size of the factor. We could talk about 20 plus 5 is 25 in both cases. It's clear that this is the greater of the two. So without doing the computation, I can say 24 times 20 plus 5 is greater than 20 plus 5 times 12. Let's look at the next one. I have 18 times 27. Hmm. Let's see if we can find anything that corresponds to that on the other side. I have 20 27s. Okay, that's the same as 20 times 27. Okay, we got that. I don't really need parentheses. Minus 127. What do we have here? Well, if I have 20 tw times 27, minus 1 times 27, I really have 19 times 27. And again, I have the same factor, or a same factor in each of these, 27 and 27. But I'm multiplying uh, this side, the right side, by a greater factor. 19 is larger than 18. So we can, without evaluating the whole thing, go do that. And really, I would consider this an adequate explanation. Now, let's look at the third one. I have nine, nine, 19 nines, or 19, 19 times 9, and I have three 19s tripled. Well, let's take a look. We are multiplying by 19 here, aren't we? nineteen here and three nineteens means that we're multiplying by nineteen three times nineteen then we're going to take that and triple it well, I'm going to draw a little diagram here I'm going to take my nineteen tape diagram and partition it into nine parts one two three four five six seven eight nine I have 19. I'm not going to write that each time here, but we know that they're all equal to 19. Here I have three 19s. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to triple it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to make and one more set. And if I look at my tape diagram, here I have nine nineteens. And here I have a total of nine nineteens. Here's three, six, nine nineteens. Therefore, these two expressions are equal. I'm going to uh, give you a, a little look at the word problem here uh, that you'll see with your homework. This is another one of these ones where somebody makes a claim. Larry claims that the sum of 14 and 12 times the sum of 8 and 12 and 14 times 12 plus 8 times 12 are equivalent because they have the same digits and same operations. 
there's a few things you could do. You could explain your thinking by doing both of these problems out and coming out with the, either the same or different answers. We could also discuss that the same numbers are not connected by the same operation. We don't get the same results when we add 14 plus 12 and multiply 14 times 12. So we can discuss the operations. I think that's not a bad idea. You can also just go and solve both of them, not too difficult, and answer this question. Again, explaining our thinking. You can explain it using some words. You can explain it using some math. You can explain it with diagrams or a combination of any of those. I hope that helps you with your homework.